Yeah, suckers, it's Mo Mandel in my apartment talking into various electronical stuff to bring you another wonderful episode of this podcast. Um, I'm loving doing this, by the way. I'm, I'm having a good time. Thank you to everybody who's been hitting me up on Instagram and uh, whatnot and um, subscribing to my YouTube channel. In case you don't know, all these videos, uh, I mean, all these podcasts and shit, they're all up on the YouTube channel, and you can check them out, and some of them are edited together in fun ways. I'm also putting out new stand-up every week up there and on my Instagram, so check that shit out. Um, I'm excited, though, because I was just talking to my pal Theo Vaughn, who's a uh, enormous podcast superstar comedian. He just booked a huge fucking movie, and I was talking to him about it, and when I was reading the press release, it says his podcast gets like 5 million listens a week. That's like a lot more than mine gets, but I'm inspired by that shit, because I remember when Theo was just doing it, and he was getting like, you know, 4,000, and he was excited about that. You know, so it makes me think maybe it's possible, man. Keep fucking just talking about myself and just try to, like, you know, build an audience. Get people who are interested in whatever the fuck I'm doing. You know, because that's crazy, man. Five fucking million. I'm inspired. Congratulations to Theo. And um, definitely next time we get dinner, he's buying because that motherfucker, I mean, that's got to add up to at least a free meal for Mo Mandel, right? I mean, that's where my mind's going on that. So, anyway, into the excitement. Big news over here in the Mo world. I, Mo Mandel, late 30s comedian, uh, aspiring podcaster, guy wearing a dumb hat currently, if, you could, if you're if you watching on YouTube. I, taking a big step in my life, adult-wise. I got engaged on Monday. I got motherfucking engaged you know, which is a crazy thing because I've always just defined myself as being immature and sort of terrified about growing up. And, you know, I live in this fucking kind of shitty apartment, this podcast, you know, my equipment right now, it's on like a the foldable plastic table that I got at Target, the kind of shit you'd have like a, you know, like an eighth grade birthday party on, like like in a fucking park. I mean, it's a sh- I, I don't live a very adult life. You know, I, I nap a lot. I eat a lot of ice cream. I jerk off a lot. You know, I, I, I literally have a, a lotion bottle near my bed. I mean, I don't even care because like, no one really comes to my apartment. So it's just sort of like it's college dorm style. And now I'm fucking engaged. That's some adult level shit. You know, I had to. You know, I have a wonderful fiance. That's just a weird thing to say, too. Fiance. That's that seems like something that like I shouldn't be saying. Like I, I feel like I'm. You know, I should still be on Tinder, right? Basically, based on my mentality, I should. I feel like I should be eating a bowl of Lucky Charms and swiping. This seems like a a new element of my life. But yeah, to have a fiance, to have a fiance, a fiancito, if you're Spanish. Um, yeah, it's fucking weird, man. It's been, it's been adult level stuff. You know, I've been, I had to go ring shopping, which is like, here's the thing. It's so crazy to have to buy a wedding ring or an engagement ring because without a doubt, that ring I bought is the most expensive thing I've ever bought besides my car. And my car's barely more expensive. Matter of fact, right now, the current value of my car, not even a third of what this fucking ring costs. You know, and I mean, I do drive an 08 Honda, so it's not, I'm not saying it was that expensive, but it's crazy. So you have to shop for something that you have no interest in, in, know nothing about, couldn't give a fuck about less. I mean, I just couldn't care less about a a Jew. Doesn't that seem so old timey? A ring? Like a fucking wedding ring? Like a, like a, just a rock that you're going to give a woman? Like it's like some caveman shit. It's, it's caveman medieval time shit. You know, it's this metal, like this forged metal, like some, you know, you just imagine some Game of Thrones fucking blacksmith just pounding that shit out and then just putting some rock on it. And then because there's like a, a scarce amount of rocks, that makes this a, a special, uh, valuable rock. It's just, it's just weird, you know? I, I, I don't know. Why, I can't believe we're still doing that, you know? We're still doing that shit. So, and, and even though, you know, my fiance is very brilliant and 
and modern and a feminist and all this, she still wants that motherfucking rock. I mean, that's that weird vestige of the of the primal female brain that's like doesn't matter how woke a woman is, ninety nine point nine percent of the time she's gonna want that diamond. That's like how it doesn't matter how mature or woke a guy is, like, you know, if he's drunk there's a good chance he'll still like, you know, in, in the right situation, be totally down to get in a fight or do some stupid violent shit. Like that's our, that's our caveman shit coming out. I think for women, it's that, uh, I don't know. It's that, that weird, I don't know. It's like that weird femininity thing that, that, and part of that is like shiny fucking rings and stuff. So, so my, you know, I knew I had to get a ring. So I, I went and, uh, I ended up getting a baller ass ring too. I went to this place because you know I couldn't pick it out myself. I went to some places and I don't know. They all kind of look the same, you know. They just sort of shiny and there's the fucking thing, and you know you you want to make sure you get one with a lot of blood on it so you know it's valuable. I mean I know that much, um, but I did. I couldn't really decide, you know. So my girlfriend she she went down and she found one kind that she she uh, she wanted. So I had to go to the store to get it, you know. This, I went down to the store on Rodeo Drive, which is like the super fancy, you know, rich people area of Beverly Hills. And not an ideal place to buy an engagement ring because there are beautiful women everywhere. So I'm walking down the Rodeo to go to the jewelry store to buy the ring that I can give to a woman so that I can, you know, never sleep with any other woman again. And as I'm walking, I'm just passing just waves of gorgeous opportunities. Just, it was almost like God just plopped down. Like, I mean, there's always beautiful women in Los Angeles and on Rodeo, but it was like extra that day. It was like, I don't know if there was a Beverly Hills 90210 convention in town. That's how old I am, but that's my reference for beautiful women. Um, but it was just like a sea of beautiful just just possible Craigslist misconnections just flooding by me like Sam, like gorgeous, sexy salmon coming down a stream, and I'm just this bear, just like, ah, ah, but I can't, I'm not supposed, but this is all going to go away, and I can't, you know, it was, it was pretty wild, man. And then, so going to the store, you know, it's this, it's a store called Van Cleef and Arpel which apparently is super fancy, which is, you know, like Cartier or something, but but I never even heard of it. It's like the cool Cartier that, like, you got to be in the know to know about. Like, it's you walk in, and they immediately ask you, you know, they see someone like me, they're like, all right, what's up? Like, what the fuck are you doing here? You know, chances are you're going to buy some bullshit or you need to use the bathroom, uh, which I don't even know if they have, by the way. I bought a very expensive thing there. I never, I never even felt comfortable enough to ask if they had a bathroom, but... They, you know, so I go in there and, and it's amazing because like when I bought my car, not that it was expensive, but they, you know, they, they knew I was buying something. They were, they were like polite about it. They were like, you know, they were kind of kissing your ass a little bit, but fucking there, anything I was looking at was bullshit because they had a necklace they were selling there with us $5 million, which is just inconceivable to me. And cause first of all, I thought it kind of sucked. Like I looked at it and it was not. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't come. I was just sort of, it was just a fucking necklace, you know, it was big, but I didn't, wasn't great. So anyway, it's $5 million. So I'm like, can I see that tiny morsel of a ring? Can I see that little speck of ring dust? You know, it was almost like an inconvenience for the woman to get out of the case. You know, she was just sort of like, oh, really? I got to fucking deal with your bullshit. Seriously? Okay. She gets it out. I mean, you know, I'm sure she was very good at her job. She was very nice. But it just sort of my, I, maybe I was projecting it. She was probably great. She did a good job. But I, I felt like almost like, you know, you could, you know, you're out of your depths. You're a fucking, uh, you're a small wallet in a big pond. And so, you know, I'm trying to pretend like I know what the fuck I'm doing, which is, you know, as you know, I mean, you go to the mechanic, like you just, you try to pretend like you know what they're talking about. When they're talking about rings, you just really have no idea. You know, you're just like, so is this mark supposed to be there? Like, oh, yeah, that's a beauty mark. That's a French mark. That's what French rings have, the French, the thing. So so anyway, so so I found the ring. I, 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 I was, all right, so, I, so this is what I'm going to do. Um, 
And then I, so it turned out they had to order it from New York. So it was going to show up the next day. So I'm like, fuck, you know, my girlfriend is going to be here the next day. And, and I wanted to be a surprise. So how do I get out of being with her? You know, because we have a long distance relationship. She lives in Portland. So she was coming down to L.A. for that weekend. You know, so I was like, shit, how am I going to get out of the house to get the ring? Because when we were going to head up the coast of Santa Barbara, that's where I was going to do my fucking work, make this whole thing happen. So I told her uh, this is the most unromantic, super L.A., super Jewish thing ever. I just lied to her that I had therapy. I, I lied to her that because we we're going to be in Santa Barbara for the weekend, my my usual therapy appointment wasn't going to get a chance to happen. So I was like, I got to go to therapy. And because I'm fucked up, she was like, yeah, that makes sense. You know, I know this guy's a train wreck. You know, he needs his therapy. I don't want to fucking steer him off that. So... So I fucking, you know, says, told her I needed therapy, go down there, fucking get the ring. And then it's this crazy thing where it's humiliating. All my credit cards won't go through because, you know, they're not used to me buying anything. Of, I mean, honestly, with my credit situation, if I get guac at Chipotle, they freeze my card and they call me. They're like, have you, are you, has this been stolen or you got a drink, chips and guac something? Are you on Coke right now? Like what's going on? Like this doesn't seem like your spending habits. So it was super embarrassing. I'm in Van Cleef and Arpels. I rang my card. Doesn't go through. Blocked. Let me try this one. Blocked. Blocked. It's fucking humiliating. I'm outside. I'm on Rodeo. Beautiful women everywhere. You know, I'm having to call my credit card companies. Meanwhile, women just flying by. (laughs) Are you sure you don't want to change your mind? Are you sure you don't want to change your mind? Just gorgeous. Just skin everywhere. Just skin and opportunity. And and you'll never sleep with any of us again if you go through with this. And it's just I'm calling my bank and... And finally, I, you know, I get a one of the, they're like, oh, okay, we'll authorize a transaction. Yeah, we don't let you spend more than 35 cents a day with these cards. So now we'll up your rate, blah, 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 blah. So I go in there, get the fucking, you know, I'm able to pay it for it because they had ordered it. So it took forever. I get back to my girlfriend. I had a lie to her that I was like talking to a friend in the car who was going through a crisis and I had to just make some shit up. And um, I still haven't told her that I made that up. So I might just let her think that this friend's that's going through a crisis or something. So anyway, so I get it, you know, and now now I got this ring. Now I got this fucking crazy ring that's worth thousands and thousands of dollars. Like I'm driving home in a, in a car worth less than a third as much of this fucking ring, you know, which is terrifying because when you drive your car off the lot, it's insured, you know, it's you hope you won't need the insurance, but it's insured. The ring's not because you can't get insurance on jewelry I just like learned all this, but you can't get insurance on jewelry until you have the receipt, you know, the, 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 whatever that says what it's worth, but you can't get that until you pay for it. And like, I was already too embarrassed that I would have been annoying the woman in the store, you know, and I felt like that I didn't want to sit around there and, you know, try to get the insurance lined up in there. So I like took the ring, the fucking little bag that has the insignia on it. So any mugger, who's walking by knows you're holding some serious shit. I mean, I don't know if the average mugger knows what Van Cleef and Arpel is either. Maybe they thought it was socks, but if there's a mugger who's really in the know of fashion shit, you know, they're, uh, they're going to know that they got a serious mark. So I fucking take it into Starbucks and I'm just sitting there with my computer. I got my little thousands and thousands of dollar ring sitting here on the table as I'm eating a cookie and drinking a, a coffee and trying to get online to to get the insurance and uh you know you're fucking having to read the policies it's crazy it was just fucking it was a stupid i shouldn't it was nuts so anyway fucking got it sure bam now we're driving up to coast of santa barbara now i gotta say i fucking nailed this shit i nailed this engagement it was perfect and i had no idea what i was gonna do because like most fucking pe- guys, I've just never thought about this kind of shit before. I never thought how I wanted to propose. Never thought about any of this, you know. And but I knew I didn't want to do a shitty. I didn't want to phone it in, you know. There's nothing worse than feeling like I was talking to my brother about this the other day. There's nothing worse than feeling like you didn't get your money's worth of an experience in life, you know. Like I've always regretted high school because I just. I wasn't able to really enjoy it. I wasn't up to it. I was just so weak and terrified and and I just wasn't able to 
to to do the activities that I wish other kids like had, you know they're part of this or part of that. They fucking had so much fun, and I was just like a, I was such a wallflower, and I fucking feel like I wasted what could have been amazing opportunities, you know. So I, I always felt like you know I didn't get my money's worth out of life. Not out of life. I'm sorry. Out of that part of my life. Out of high school. So far, I think I'm getting my money's worth out of life. It remains to be seen. But out of that part of my life, high school fucking wasted it, you know? And I think a lot of people feel that way. I think a lot of people feel like they just weren't, you know, they weren't able to show up, you know? They're just like, because you ever have like an amazing opportunity or you do like an amazing thing and and then, but you're just not in the right zone for it, so you kind of squander it? That's kind of like all of high school was like for me. So, so anyway... I wanted to make sure that I got my money's worth out of this engagement, you know, because this is like a this is like a life, this is like a moment, you know. You want to have, you want this moment to, to to be able to think about. But I didn't know what the fuck I was going to do. Staying in Santa Barbara, you know, in the fucking which is already hacky. I know, like with engagements, like it's just hacky. You can't, you know what I mean? Like you could try to do something that's not beautiful beach location, beautiful ring, but like what the fuck? Who are you to, you know? It's works. And that's what mostly what women want, you know, that you can't be like, I thought I'd be cool. We'll go to fucking, uh, you know, we'll go to like a dungeon or or like, you know, we'll go to like a fucking, you know, I mean, you know, you got to do something beautiful. You can't, you can't just be like, uh, I thought we'd go to St. Louis and uh, stay in a, 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 a holiday inn just to change things up. You know, I thought we'd go to uh, an action Van Damme movie double feature at a, at a little movie house. Uh, oh, you get it. So you want to do the fucking hacky shit. So we went to Santa Barbara, and I had this fucking idea. I was like, dude, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a yacht. I had just like, just somehow I was like, dude, I don't even like boats really. But I was like, what if we, what if I do this at sea? So I'm like with my girlfriend. I'm on my phone all the time, and she's getting annoyed at me. She's like, why the fuck are you on your phone? You know, I mean, this could have ruined the whole relationship. But what she doesn't know is she thinks I'm on Instagram or some shit. No, I'm, I'm in a little bit. But I was mostly looking up this yacht company, trying to figure out. How do I line this shit up? You know, and like an idiot, I put all this stuff off. I put all this stuff off. Like, here's a little side note. If I'd have just bought this ring earlier and had it shipped to Portland, where I go all the time to see my girlfriend, I could have had it shipped to my friend's house up there. I would have avoided sales tax. Over a thousand fucking dollars I spent because I didn't have, but I didn't want to wait because, you know, by the time I knew I had to propose, why well, I wanted to propose this weekend. Because the next week I'm going to be up there. Her sister's going to be there, and that's going to fuck. That would fuck up my romance. So I was like, I mean, sister's great, but she's going to be like a cock blocker. It's not going to, you know, it wouldn't be romantic. So even though she's lovely. But so I was like, all right, let me just get the ring now. So I had to pay fucking sales tax. So anyway, my point is I don't plan shit out. I don't plan ahead. So I was on this phone. I was on my phone, you know, you know, risking the relationship all unraveling, risking, risking argument. You know, risky not getting laid in Santa Barbara on what's going to be my proposal engagement weekend. You don't want to not, you know, there shouldn't be a dry genital anywhere within a 50-mile radius. You know what I mean? I want this to be a wet genital weekend, you know? I mean, that's wet, WWW, whatever. So anyway, so, so anyway, I locked down this fucking boat. I have to go outside and talk to him, so I got to tell my girlfriend again. I have to blame it on this friend who's having a crisis. So I'm just like, ah, he's just having a real hard time. She's like, what the fuck's wrong with this pussy? I'm like, I don't know. He's just being a little bitch right now, but I got to be a good friend for him. So I go outside to have this phone call with my friend, and I'm like, talking to the boat guy. I'm working it out. While I'm out there, this is really the most special part. I walk by a CVS where all romance is born, right? And in the CVS, I found a little trophy, like an Academy Award trophy, that said, best girlfriend. So I was like, oh, this will be fucking hilarious. You know, right when she thinks of pulling out the ring, boom, hit her with that best girlfriend trophy. You know, this will be dynamite. So I bought it. And I had this little fucking thing. So it's all it all works out. And then it's just this amazing moment. We get on this boat. There's this old timey dude who's just like this fucking old man who's cool. He's got an old man vibe to him, you know, he's wise, he's probably been married and divorced 16 times, you know, who knows what he does now, he probably masturbates to pictures of old rocking chairs, like, I don't even know what his deal is, but he's just like, he's an old, you know what I mean, like, he probably fucking killed a bear with his hands, like, he was probably doing some, like, real shit, so he was our captain, and we go out there, and it's just, like, amazing, there's dolphins everywhere, 
There's all these seals, sea lions on these little buoys there hanging out there, which is just, it was almost like the whole, I felt like I was Aquaman and I had summoned the best of the ocean just to come be there for this romantic moment. You know, so my girlfriend's drinking some wine out of a can because she's a classy wench and literally was canned wine. I didn't even know they had that, but so she's got her ice cold canned wine and uh, we got gummy worms. We got potato chips. It's a really beautiful moment all around. And so this is where it gets kind of curb your enthusiasm. This is where the engagement gets kind of ridiculous. This is where the proposal almost goes awry and your in modern technology comes to bite you in the ass. So. So we got the Bluetooth plugged in to the Spotify. And we, you know, it's just me and her on the boat, the old man in the back, whittling, I don't know, uh, you know, reading Mein Kampf, whatever he's doing. And we are, um, you know, we got the oldies playing through the speakers. So I'm like, all right, it's, you know, it's getting to the point, almost sun, almost sunset, you know, although we're on the other side of the mountain, so you can't see the sun, which was the only thing that was kind of like, fuck. So we're getting some sun, nice sun colors, but we're not seeing the sun. You get it. So. Dolphins, sea lions, sort of sun, old man in the back doing what he's doing, uh, us up front. I decide this is the moment, right? So I tell her, hang tight. I'm going to go to the bathroom, you know, which was already my second pee break on the boat. It only been like an hour. So she was giving me shit about it. You know, she's like, oh, my God, you got to pee again. I'm like, I don't want to fucking marry this bitch. You know what I mean? Like, I'm fucking making sure that a man's peeing. Maybe I don't want her this fucking trick. No, I didn't say that. But, but you know, she was she, she was making fun of me. So I was like, okay, it's you're getting made fun of her having a small bladder as you're going to get this expensive ring to give this one. I mean, it's a perfect, uh, it's a perfect analogy for probably what marriage will be like. So I get the ring downstairs, get the trophy, boom, put it in this jacket, put it. Oh, I, first of all, I wasn't wearing a jacket because it was very warm. But I was like, I can't walk. You know, I need something to hide this stuff. So put on the jacket, put the ring in this pocket, boom, trophy in this pocket, arm for battle, arm for a romantic battle. Come out in the jacket. She immediately makes fun of me for wearing a jacket. She's like, what are you? You're that cold? It's not even cold. She's, you're cold? Why are you cold? So she's just like, make it, I mean, it's bullshit. You know, I mean, I'm having this romantic, beautiful moment and I'm fucking taking shit making fun of me in this jacket. And why do I have a jacket? Because I bought stuff for you. And now you're fucking giving me shit. So whatever. She's doing her thing. She's busting chops. But all right, so the moment's right, you know. So and I gave the camera to the old man. I was like, yeah, I know you've never seen a camera before. You don't know how technology works. Hold it. I'm like, I pressed the button. I pressed record. I said, just hold it up, right? So fucking make my way around the boat. It's a tiny boat. Waves going, high five in dolphins, jerking off a sea lion, fucking just fucking doing it. The whole ocean's cheering me on. Get to the back of the boat. She goes, oh, now I gotta pee. I'm like, are you fucking seriously? Oh. So now she's like, now she's navigating. You know, the old man's like kind of hiding the phone. Like, what do I do? I'm like, I don't fucking know. I'm gonna go videotape her pee. I don't know. Sell it on the internet. I don't fucking care anymore. It's over. You know, this whole thing isn't working out. So she goes downstairs to pee, and she takes forever. I don't know if she was taking a shit. She claims that she just couldn't figure out how to get the yacht toilet. It was a little confusing. I don't know what was really going on. But I thought she must know what's about to happen, and she's probably, like, trying to get herself all gussied up for the photos. So she's in there. Old man's looking at me like, ah! I do and I'm like I don't fucking know I was just waiting just waiting you know I had this great video of him just like pointing the camera at the ground as me and him are just sort of trying to make small talk she comes back up so now it's now it's ready now I'm ready for you know the oldies the oldies is going right in the middle of a song it's not a good song but I don't want to propose to this song so I'm like all right as soon as this song's done then I hit her with a proposal will you marry me I give her the whole fucking I give her the goods I give her the will you marry me goods song ends I'm about to do it, oh, but now it's a fucking commercial. Motherfucking Spotify hits us with a commercial. This was like the perfect, this would have been a commercial for why you should sign up for commercial-free Spotify. It was unbelievable. The timing was perfect. Like Literally, as I'm going down on one knee, just about to go down, boom, it's a commercial for like a fucking, I don't even know what. And I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. And we had about to get it done, boom, now it's a yoga commercial. It fucking get, Four commercials in a row, dude. It was crazy. I'm like, uh, yeah, I keep being about to go down on one knee. Okay, it's gonna be, it's gonna be. Uh, just, oh, do you need a car wash? Come on down to Crazy's fucking Eddie's. You know, do you need a circumcision? Well, we'll do it for you. It was just like fucking just one after another of commercials. I couldn't believe it. I never heard so many commercials on Spotify, and it was like the way the ocean 
came together to to cheer me on. Spotify had now come together to to destroy me, to to take me down, you know, and and she doesn't understand. She's like, why are you getting so mad at these commercials? I was like, fuck, shit. And the old man's like, oh, do I, am I going? I'm like, what's going on? And he's filming the whole thing. He doesn't know what's going on. He thinks it's the worst proposal ever. Finally, finally, after a, a four or five commercials, I can't remember, could have been a thousand, could have been 10, maybe it's still happening now and I've just passed out. Finally, I hear, tonight, tonight, na, 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 na. beautiful oldie song comes on. I get down, I get down on one knee. She comes down to join me. She thinks I'm just sitting down for some reason. I don't know if she had wine. She wasn't picking up. Clearly, my girlfriend would make a horrible detective. That's what's clear. If, if it was Detective Ashley, there would be no... There would be no case of salt. Be a lot of a lot of murder still on the street. So I start going down on one knee. She slowly starts going down too. I'm like, no, no, no you you, st- you should stand up. She's like, why are you standing? And then like I took off her glasses because she'd been leaning. I'd taken off her glasses. Still, that should have been a, that should have been a dead giveaway. And she knew the guy was filming us at this point. So I don't know the fuck. So she was like, why is he filming? I was like, oh, I just want to take a picture. So, so then I so anyway, so I go down and I just start. I just start going into it, and she's, you know, uh, uh, giving her the speech, the goods. You know, I don't want to paraphrase myself. I'm sure it was beautiful and romantic and amazing. But the bulk of the speech, I know, was about this. Earlier that that, that day, we had, because um, I wasn't sure. Like, I was like, do I want to plan out my engagement, uh, you know, speech? But then I'm like, I'm a comic, you know. I feel like I'm always kind of doing the same material, and, I, it, it, you know, stifles you sometimes. You want to be loose. So let's be loose to try to be in the moment. I couldn't think of it. I, I knew I wanted to say all the love stuff, but I couldn't think of the, I couldn't think of like the perfect analogy, the perfect metaphor. You know, I, I, all I could think of was just like, I love you, I love you, I, love you, I, love you, I want you to be with me, I love you, I love you, which, which is probably what you should go for. But I'm like, you know, an artsy motherfucker, so I wanted some good artistry. I'm a creative writing major. I want some artistry to it. So anyway, earlier that day, this is what I was going to say, we had gone on this hike uh, up to this like fucking like bullshit old house or castle thing that's around Santa Barbara, and then she had seen somewhere like when she looked up online that if you walk up this other hill, you get an even better view. You know how people are with views; like it's already a perfect view. By the way, if you're looking on YouTube, look at how much sweat is generated by these memories. The fucking shirt is just drenched, disgusting. Um, this shirt is so old. By the way, I put it on this morning for an audition. I smelled it; I almost passed out. So. Uh, so she had seen that if you walk up above this mountain, you get a better view. You know, I mean, people have like a beautiful view. We already saw the ocean, everything. It's, it's amazing. But the idea is, oh, if you get another 38 feet up, that's when that real good view hits you. That's when that good view hits you. So, so she, she says she wants to take this. We want, she was like, why don't we walk up there? I'm just like hot and fucking tired. I want to go home and take a nap before I do this. But I got the proposal. I got to figure things out. I want to go swimming. I want to go to the beach. It's hot. I'm fucking thirsty. You know, whatever. So I'm like, oh, okay, great. So should we go on this, this extra hike? And now it's tough. She can't, she keeps slipping. We're kind of almost too far up to go back down. I have to help her up. Then we get to the top. So it's beautiful view. I mean, is it worth it? I don't know. It's, it's cool. It's beautiful. It was beautiful down there. Whatever. So now we got to go back, and I decide we should take a shortcut down the mountain this way. Now it's really tricky. She's almost falling. I think she did fall. I'm almost falling. Maybe I did fall, and we're having to, like, she's having to hold on to my shoulders as we walk down this thing. I'm literally having to almost brace her body as she goes down this thing. I know we're about to get married. She's a surgeon. I don't want her breaking her wrists. That fucks up my whole plan. That whole, that you know, if she breaks her wrist, she can't be a surgeon anymore. We'll just call the whole thing off. Um, so... So anyway, so she, we're going down, and, um, and, I, and I'm having to help her down. And we work as a team to get down. I mean, I'm doing most of the work. She's definitely the second string. I'm the first string. I'm making it happen. So I sort of incorporated all that into this, this sort of speech where I'm sort of saying, like, you know, like today I want, I want us to always pull each other up to see even greater adventures and greater heights and greater views and greater magis- magic and then support each other, you know, throughout the whole experience. And just like it was a beautiful kind of kind of tied together. Point is, she didn't hear any of it because she, by this point, gushing, tears gushing. I mean, I have been to funerals for close friends and don't cry at all. I don't know if I'm broken inside. I don't know what. She was gushing. I mean, it's the most f- straight up female cliche thing I've ever seen out of her or any woman. It was like me on one knee, beautiful, and she's just, ah, 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 
<laughs> just tears. Just uh, uh, it was the most like I was like, should I not have proposed? Did you not want me to do this? And I hadn't even showed her the ring yet. You know, she's just crying, just gushing. And it's like, I know the guy's filming, but fuck, man, I wish the camera was here so I could have seen her face because that's that's the memory that I have of just her just just crying and looking at me with she looks so beautiful but so tearful her face was all red but like beautiful but like fucking crying like shit you know and um even some of the seals were like god damn like fucking jesus christ is she going through menopause what's happening a lot of emotion you know i think a lot of it was that canned wine you know i was talking to one of the dolphins afterwards and they were saying that canned wine will fuck you up that'll get you that emotion so anyway, so we're there. So now she she realized, it took her a long time to realize this was like a real thing. And then I reach into the jacket and I say, and that's why I want to give you this. Boom. And I hit her with that best girlfriend trophy. She fucking smacks me in the face, like just instinctually hit me in the face. She just thought I had this whole thing had been bullshit. I was just like, I was just leading up to that joke. So now she's made fun of me for the jacket, made fun of me for the peeing, hit me. But I still know I love this woman and I still want to marry her. Matter of fact, the fact that she hit me makes me love her even more. Because I, if I had done this whole thing and all I was going to do was give her that trophy, I would deserve to be hit. She could have stabbed me. She would have been justified to hit me, stab me in the face. If that, so, so I respect her. I love her even more for that. I, I do. I love her even more for being violent in that moment. And then I bring out that ring in that box. And I mean, literally... If this would have fallen into the ocean, I'm fucked. I mean, it's fucked. There's no, it's, it has not insured. I'm on a little fucking boat. It's rocky. There's a lot of, like, you know, sea lines around that don't look trustworthy. There's dolphins, you know, popping in its hole, take off. I don't know. Anything can happen. I bring it out, and now she's just gushing, crying. I'm thinking if we sway, we're going to fall off the boat. You know, it's just all happening. She opens it up. It's just, you know, this beautiful ring. It's just, it's gorgeous. The whole thing, it was so fucking beautiful. It was so fucking beautiful. It was so great. It was, it was just amazing, man. It was really like one of those moments where, I mean, I'm so glad it's all documented too. And not in like a cheesy way because like neither, you know, it's just an old, you can't hear what I said. It's just the sound. I should put it up online. But you just hear the commercials and then you hear like, tonight, tonight. Anyway, so it's so beautiful. I, I It was just an amazing it's really like an amazingly beautiful uh, uh, experience, you know. It was so cool. It felt, and then it's just cool. You have fiance. You get to say, "I have a fiance," you know. So then, of course, we go to dinner, and she's like, she she goes, you know, I don't think we should we should wait a few weeks before we start planning the wedding, you know, because uh, you know, just to enjoy it. And I was like, that's a lot to wait two weeks. Like I didn't think we were going to think about the wedding for like eight months. I I didn't even think I didn't even occur to me. And, and then my mom's like, yeah, take a week at least to you plan the way. So take a fucking week? My bank account is empty. Fucking empty. You know how much it costs to rent a yacht, a hotel in Santa Barbara, and a ring? And obviously I picked up all the meals that weekend. I mean, it was a lot. So now I don't know where our wedding is going to probably be uh, in my apartment where I'm doing the podcast right now. So, man, amazing to me. Um, amazing to me, though, that it has come to this because... You know, I've had wonderful girlfriends in the past before. I've been in love before. It's been great moments and this and that. But bef- And there really have been special people in my life. And I, and I like to thank every woman who I've been with, you know, who has taught me taught me things about love and, and, and partnership and, and, and lessons of intimacy and helped me make me a better person. But what's amazing to me is that, like, you know, four and a half years ago I was single drinking more than I ever drank before, having a ton of unprotected, promiscuous sex. I was very much not happy, having a lot of one-night stands, very much all depressed on those stupid apps, you know, not taking care of myself, just in some trouble, things weren't going good, I had to get my way out of a few things, and it was just like, it's amazing to be here now and to know that I'm literally engaged to the most beautiful, wonderful woman in the entire world. And it all happened in front of seals and the ocean and Aquaman and everybody. So, you know, if anybody is feeling like shit, their life's not in a good place. Here I am now, sober, on the right track, I believe, engaged to a beautiful doctor. Um, yeah. I, who I, I'm engaged to the most wonderful woman in the world, um, or at least for me, 
and uh, I really am engaged and have a great relationship, and I'm, I'm progressing. So the, the point is, fucking don't give up on your shit. Don't give up because you you have to you have to you know you got to quit the bad things. You got to let go of the bad habits. You got to get in therapy. Get on fucking Zoloft if you need to. You know I've definitely been dabbling in that kind of shit throughout many aspects of my life. Let go of the fucking scummy scum life shit. Let go of the one night stands. You know if that's not serving you, let go of the fucking. You know, just stupid, promiscuous sex. Use condoms unless, you know, when you're in a relationship, then you don't have to. But but fucking be just, if you start putting your energy towards a life you want to live, truly beautiful, amazing, perfect moments can happen. And I am living proof of that. And uh, I really, I really do feel like, you know, it's, 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 this moment makes me like, wow, it's, it's proof, uh, you know, it, it, it spells it out so clear to me. If you if you're willing to put in the time and make the changes to yourself, you can have a, a truly for the better changed life, and um in a, in a changed circle around you. So with that said, uh, I'm full of shit. Fuck everybody. Fuck everything. Bullshit. Fuck. 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 Who cares about feelings? Stop being such a little bitch, pussy. Uh, fuck. 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 There's my heartfelt. Fuck a dolphin. Fuck a fucking baby seal. Fuck it all. Fuck that old man who was probably jerking off while I was reposing. Fuck that CVS. You know. Fuck it all. Fuck. 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 Back to dirtiness. And who gives a shitness? Um, subscribe on the podcast, guys. Tell your friends, man. Next week, I'm going to have like another comedian guest. I just wanted to make this one just personal. You know, I just wanted to talk, do my personal shit, you know, um, let you guys in on my little world or whatever. So I'm going to post some videos and stuff from that engagement on the, uh, the Instagram, the real Mo Mandel on Instagram, YouTube, new videos every Tuesday. Um, and even more than that, new stand-up videos every Tuesday on my Instagram, The Real Mo Mandel. Follow me on Facebook, like me, you know, and um, yeah, man, fucking keep living, dreaming, swimming, and, uh, you know, keep being the, uh, the little sea lion that you're meant to be.